On this week's show, Liberty lefty Trevor DeLate is making headlines again. And on the gridiron, we'll show you why Liberty's defense is in good hands this season. Plus, a familiar face returns to the Liberty Cross Country coaching staff, and we head to the skate park with a Liberty alum. This is Flame Central. It may officially be summertime, but here at Flame Central, we don't take vacations. We continue to bring you great stories on Liberty athletes, coaches, and alumni. And this week's show, no different. So you're saying I should cancel my vacation? I already canceled your oh, vacation, okay. actually. Yeah. He's mad. I'm Emily. Thanks so much for joining us this week. And we kick things off with yet another Flame receiving national recognition. Yeah, Trevor DeLate doesn't seem like a guy who seeks out attention. But when you have a season like he did, attention finds you. The senior left-hander was named in ABCA Rawlings' third team All-American. It's the second All-American honor that DeLay has earned since the Flames season came to a close. Not to mention that he was also nominated for National Pitcher of the Year. Now, why all the love for the kid from Maine? Well, he set the Liberty record for wins in a season with 12 to go along with a 2.17 ERA and five complete games. Up next for DeLay, he'll hope to hear his name called in the Major League Baseball draft, which begins on July 11th. Well, the Olympics are right around the corner, and a couple former Flames turned in solid performances at the U.S. Olympic trials. Former LU pole vaulter Carson Waters made the men's final, where he would tie a lifetime best mark of 18 feet, 8 and a quarter inches. That clearance would be good enough for 11th place. In the 10K, Liberty track legend Sam Chalanga, now running for the U.S. Army, would finish in 8th place. He had finished 6th in this event back at the 2016 trials. So while neither of these athletes punched their tickets to Tokyo, they did perform well and did a great job representing Liberty University. Well, speaking of running, a successful and familiar leader will be working with the women's cross country program this upcoming season. Liberty Athletics Hall of Famer and All-American Heather Zeeland returns to LU for the second time in her coaching career. She previously spent nine years coaching with the Lady Flames. As a competitor, Zeeland put together quite a decorated running resume as well. She was a 14-time Big South champion and became the first ever Lady Flame to win an ECAC title in the 2002 Indoor Mile. She still owns four program records. Her coaching role will focus on the women's distance runners who, as you remember, made the program's first ever appearance at the NCAA championships this last season. Zeeland will replace Rachel Johnson, who is stepping away from collegiate coaching. We spoke with head coach Lance Bingham on what Zeeland will bring to the program. Just her cross center focus. She did that as an athlete. She was available, she worked hard, she understood work ethic, applying biblical principles to training day in and day out, and yet leaving it up to the Lord on the results. And when you can have someone that can come in and mentor that way, as well as understand the ins and outs of coaching, perfect fit. <laughs> Well, turning the page to football now, the Flames are currently on campus participating in summer workouts as they prepare for the highly anticipated 2021 season. And while Malik Willis and Liberty's offense gets most of the headlines, this Flames defense has a chance to be pretty special. It's led by the guy behind me, Javon Scruggs. And as we found out in this story from last season, leading is something that comes naturally. I've, I've never known a young man to listen and believe like he does. Sometimes a coach can sense that an athlete is meant for greatness. For Appomattox Raiders head coach Doug Smith, he knew that there was something special inside of Javon Scruggs. His freshman year um, at 103 pounds, we took him to team camp. And the only reason we took him to team camp was we don't usually take guys that we don't think would play varsity, uh, was because of his leadership ability and his ability to listen and pay attention. You know, it meant a lot to me because it just told me, it just let me know that Coach Smith had a lot of trust in me and that's basically what I needed. What he ends up doing is learning the playbook about as good as anybody and started to tell juniors and seniors where they need to line up because they weren't listening. So when the call was made, he'd be getting people into place. Football IQ was never an issue for Javon. The game came naturally to him. The same couldn't be said, however, for his size. That year, I was probably was going to the weight room probably about three times a day. I had one during class, 
Then I would go out right after track practice. And then after track practice, after that weight room session, I'll probably go home and do a couple spreads, curls, something like that. It takes a tremendous amount of dedication, especially when you don't add supplements to it. You know, he, he's not taking supplements. We, you know, we do a little protein bars and milk. Uh, and that's all he was getting. During his ninth grade year at Appomattox, Javon would put on over 30 pounds of muscle through hard work and a lot of sweat. That determination and leadership gave Coach Smith the idea that Javon would be perfect for a vacant role on the team. When Coach Smith came and told me that he wanted me to be quarterback, I just, at first I was like, no way, <laughs> no way. And then all the other players on the team was like, yeah, we think that you could be that next guy. So we went to Karshanumi camp, all these other camps to try to throw. I actually was throwing like a baseball player. And then as I went to go all these camps, they just got my technique down from my feet all the way up. He, you know, he'd be one of the first ones out there throwing into a net. He'd be one of the first ones working on his foot drill. He was never lazy in doing his, his drops. He would always make sure his drops were with, with you know, purpose. About a couple weeks right before the season, that's when I started feeling like, okay, I can, I know the emotion, I know the, the technique and all those things, and how, the degree of my arm to my, from my pit. I knew all those things too. So I knew how like certain routes I can laser, certain routes I got a lob, and just that uh, going to those camps really helped me figure out my throwing motion, because it was not, it was not a quarterback throwing motion in the beginning at all. He would go on to lead his team to back-to-back -to -back state championships as quarterback, breaking school records in the process, and opening the door for him to play college ball as a QB or in the secondary. It wasn't only his play on the field that attracted coaches. His leadership ability couldn't be missed, which is summarized perfectly by his nickname that was given to him by a Raiders booster. One day he, he sees me out there on the field and, and I'm somehow just communicate with the office so good, I guess, in his eyes. So he's looking at me, he's like, you know what I think you are? And I was like, what? He was like, I'm gonna start calling you the general. And the reason he got that name was uh, because people could see uh, from the stands and from the sidelines how he would command, you know, his troops. First touchdown I scored, he yells like, oh yeah, the generals are back. I was like, oh, okay. And so that just basically stuck my leg leg from there. Everybody calls me that. Now as Javon is in the midst of his third season at LU, the once scrawny kid who barely weighed 100 pounds is a fixture and a leader on the Liberty defense. Guys that play high school quarterback, um, in my time of coaching college, you can't put a price tag on those guys. He knows how to lead. He knows how to lead a huddle. Uh, he knows how to you know, influence others. He's, well, he's a great communicator. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, man. We're just, we're different without him on the field as far as he's calling out tendencies. And, you know, he's one of those guys you can really prep from a linebacker or safety standpoint. Hey, when you get this, it's probably going to be this. And he's going to know it on game day. So things that he wants to reach, but but he loves being here and he loves being a part of this team. And at the end of the day, he's, he's a selfless guy that just wants to see this program, you know, first and foremost, be successful. And that's what I love about him is, you know, his heart and just his energy. Scruggs led the Liberty defense in tackles last season with 69, and it was a defense that was pretty underrated nationally. Mm -hmm. Take a look at some of these numbers. 22nd in scoring defense, 11th in yards allowed per game, and in an era when everyone's slinging the ball around the yard, the Flames were 12th in the nation in pass yards allowed. Before you start the whole, oh, who'd they play argument, <laughs> keep in mind, the Flames held three ACC opponents to a combined 23 and a half points per game. Javon Scruggs, a big part of that Flames success. And you know what, Matt? Javon Scruggs is only going to get better yeah. because the Flames defense have brought in so many pieces in that secondary that are only going to cause more competition, right. which means the level of play only goes up. They bring back a ton, but you mentioned in the transfer portal, they added some key players, Skylar Thomas, being one of them, the Washington State oh, transfer, yeah. some new linebackers as well. They're an underrated group. You think so much about Hugh Freeze and the offense for the Flames. I kind of think they like playing with a little chip on their shoulder, don't you? Like, I, yeah, yeah, talk about the offense. We'll just take care of our business. I think we'll start talking about them a lot right. more. Well, last season, only a few of us saw that fire defense by the Flames and, of course, the elite play of quarterback Malik Willis. But that's not the case this year. Liberty Athletic Director Ian McCaw announced recently that Williams Stadium 
will operate at 100% full capacity for the 2021 season. Can I get a round of applause, please? Yeah, let's do it. The Flames have six home games on the schedule this season. The stadium holds 25,000, Matt, and we expect it rocking every single game. So tell your friends and family, come out and support your number 17 ranked Flames this season. And you know what, Matt? As a matter of fact, you should just get season tickets right now. Trust me, once you see Malik Willis play live, you're going to want to see more. And season tickets are available for purchase today. So head over to lufootball.com for more information to secure your seats today. Well, we've talked a lot about all the conference titles and big wins throughout the athletic department this past year, but the accomplishments don't stop on the field for LU student athletes. Even though it was a strange year academically, the Flames still managed to thrive in the classroom or, well, virtual classroom, but you know what I mean. LU athletes finished the 2020-2021 academic year with a 3.27 cumulative GPA, which is the second highest recorded mark in athletics department history. A total of 19 programs held a 3.0 GPA or higher. Awesome to see these athletes excelling on and off the field. Great athletes and really smart. Wow, that'd be kind of like having a, a great TV show and a great podcast at the same time. Okay. What's that? Oh, oh, yeah, that's what we do here. It's the <laughs> Flame Central podcast. And this week, Rhett, Emily, and I were reminiscing about some of our favorite Flames moments from this past year. Okay, Matt Warner, one of your top moments. All right, one of mine, we have to go back to, it was the first football game at home. So the first home game against FIU. Fourth quarter, Liberty's up. Malik Willis kind of rolls out, takes off down the near sideline. A guy has the angle, hits him, and we've all seen the highlight. Malik spins, oh, yeah. keeps his feet, mm. keeps going. It was a 67-yard run, and that was kind of a moment for me. We saw him against Western Kentucky, mm -hmm. and you kind of are like, whoa, okay, this kid might be pretty good. But that was one of the moments where you're like, this guy is different. Okay, like, this he is the real deal. Just, yeah. He is just a different level athlete than we've seen in a Flames uniform, certainly at the quarterback position. And that was kind of the moment for me where it's like, this could be a really, really fun yeah. year. And and it was. Matt, you you taught Malik that move, I did teach right? him that move, yes. To hear the rest of our favorite moments from the past year and to catch some great interviews from athletes and coaches, check out the Flame Central Podcast. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen, we are there. Well, coming up next, the Liberty alum shares about his unique ministry to a neglected group in society. Plus, we introduce you to a talented transfer on the Flames football team with the latest Take One. Stay with us. Liberty University is more than my sponsor. It's my school, too. Fuel your education at Liberty University. A graduate degree is about more than letters behind your name. It's about mastering ideas, standing out from the crowd, not just for expertise, but for excellence and integrity. At Liberty University, we stand out from the crowd by not raising online tuition prices for the past six years and offering lower rates for select programs. Over 250 graduate degrees, one you, infinite possibilities. In 1776, one of the most important documents in our nation's history was penned by one of Virginia's most famous residents. Throughout the next 200 years, the importance of Central Virginia was deeply woven into the tapestry of our nation's history. Liberty University is blessed to be built upon these same historic grounds, furthering the Christian tradition of our founding fathers and training young men and women of character and of calling. At Liberty, you're welcomed into a community rich with history, and we invite you to explore our campus in Central Virginia to discover more than just the surface level. Building upon the tapestry of history, we strive for greatness, humble to be at the heart of where the country began. You work hard. You sacrifice. You do what it takes for your kids to succeed. 
college can be expensive, but your income makes it difficult to qualify for much, if any, need be state. Until now. Liberty's Middle America Scholarship provides over $20,000 in financial aid over the course of four years to families typically bringing in between $35,000 and $95,000 annually. At Liberty, we don't just believe everyone should have access to higher education. We make it happen. Welcome back to Flame Central. For whatever reason, skateboarders tend to have a bad reputation, when in reality, many just want to do their jumps and tricks without causing any trouble. That was a similar story for Liberty alum John Bernard, until one small gesture changed his life and led him to ministry. So here I am, I'm, I'm in my 40s, you know? I've got like a mortgage, I've got a master's degree from Liberty, and, um, I've established myself, you know, I've done a few things. Um, I've traveled and uh, so here I am kind of enjoying the thing that I like to do. And chances are some dude's gonna roll down his window from his 98 Cavalier and he's gonna yell something really derogatory about skateboarders. And that my friend is like proof positive that there's still maybe not really a, uh, an appreciation for this culture from others. It's 1987 and I'm a skateboarder. Me and my friends are skating at Park Place Baptist Church in Houston and it's a great parking lot, parking blocks, uh, handrails. And so we're skating there and I see some guys come out of the building and they walk over to us and we figure, okay, we know how this is gonna go down. You know, we're gonna grab all our stuff and no, it's cool, man, we'll leave. But they say, no, 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 we're not kicking you out. We wanted to let you know that you could go ride your skateboards on the gym floor because it's really smooth. That was the moment, you know, right there, knowing that I was being accepted, right, for who I was, because I was a skateboarder, first and foremost. That was huge, and that changed everything. That gesture of acceptance intrigued John and would eventually open the door to his decision to accept Christ. From that point forward, John's passion for skateboarding and his newfound love of Jesus would merge to become his calling. I just kind of realized uh, just how, how well skateboarding and ministry fit together because this was giving me the opportunity to hang out with skaters and just kind of seeing like, oh man, these guys need support. Support for a group often overlooked in society. Okay, so here's the dilemma for skateboarders. You pull up to a strip mall or a place of business um, and it doesn't take long before you probably see something that you really want to skate on and that means that you don't have to look much farther to see a sign that says no skateboarding, right? Um, and so I think that kind of works its way into a skater's psyche. Think about this, even like a 12 year old, to be able to be put up next to like no loiterers, no solicitors, no skateboarders. Seeing a ministry opportunity, John would eventually launch Middleman Ministries, a nonprofit committed to helping the skateboarding community realize their identity, purpose, and community in Christ. In scripture, it talks about Jesus hanging on a cross between two thieves. He was the man in the middle. It also talks about the son being our advocate for the father, right? Pleading our case. And so a lot of times in culture, we don't think that the middleman is a good thing, but in this case, it's absolutely necessary. And since John has been skateboarding for over three decades, he understands the community he serves. By and large, they're probably going to be pretty skeptical of anything that comes into their, you know, microcosm, anything that comes into their culture that's kind of not of them, right? To say like, hey man, like what, you know, what's your deal? What's your angle? Why would you, they're not used to people pursuing them in a positive way, right? Of like friendship and maybe the hope to, to share your faith with them. Middleman mentors aim to build relationships with skaters to invest in them on a daily basis. And whether it's spending time at the skate park, or building a board from scratch at Middleman's home base in Waco, Texas, John is leading the charge to serve this community. We get excited about opportunities to um, work with a culture 
that is so often like a throwaway culture. If something breaks, well then I'll just go buy another one. But thank the Lord that that's not how God works, right? That He is in the business of restoring um, and redeeming. And so we just kind of view like, even with our projects, these are just kind of some, some physical um, examples of what God is doing in the spiritual life of, of His people. Another way Middleman shares the gospel message is through artwork. Skateboarding is so graphic in nature, right? All of these boards, um, the, the shirts that we wear, they all send a message. Um, and that message can be one of life, and that message can be one of death. And so, unfortunately, a lot of skateboarding is about the celebration of irresponsibility, right? It's the believer's opportunity um, to give the, the answer, right? As Peter said, give an answer for the hope that you profess, but do it with gentleness and respect. And so even our graphics are an opportunity. If I hand that, that giving tree um, skateboard to a kid, then I get the opportunity to talk about how love is sacrifice, right? And how Jesus sacrificed for us. So ready, on your mark, get set, ready, break, let's skate. Let's like many of the young skaters at this middleman camp, John's love for the sport grew from an early age. Oh, that was a false start, but that's all right. And as he looks back now, He's able to reflect on God's faithfulness to use his passion for skateboarding to impact lives for eternity. And now here we are at this place where we, where we manufacture skateboards by the hundreds and we print custom mentor Bibles by the hundreds every year and we're constantly giving these things away, modeling grace, talking about the fact that we have been freely given to and so we're able to freely give. Skateboarding at one time in my life gave me identity it gave me purpose and it gave me community. And the beauty of it is I still get to enjoy some of these things in a very temporal way with skateboarding, but thank God that he has shown me like the true identity of who I am in Christ, my purpose to, to glorify him in all I do, and, and thankfully my community. Wow, Matt, what a cool guy. I absolutely love the name of his ministry, yeah. Middleman Ministry. And then you just never know. One small gesture can completely change somebody's life. I love this story. Yeah, we were down there in Waco with him, and it was so cool. You saw the young man that was in a lot of those shots with him. Mm -hmm. That was a kid that just happened to be at the skate park when we were shooting. And to see John in real time interact with him, kind of share with him and bring him in, that kid spent the rest of the day with us. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's part of the ministry now because John included him in such a unique way. Such a great example. All right, well, after the break, we introduce you to a new flame on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, it's another take one coming up next. Don't go anywhere. At Liberty University, we don't just believe everyone should have access to higher education. We make it happen. That's why we are offering our Middle America Scholarship to help families like yours by providing over $20,000 over the course of four years. Money should not hold you back from the life-changing experience at Liberty University. Find out if you qualify for the Middle America Scholarship today. Teachers, your goal in the classroom is to help your students succeed. At Liberty University, it's ours too. That's why you can earn your Bachelor's of Education, Master's of Education, or Master's in Teaching without leaving home for one of the lowest tuition rates in the nation. Study conveniently and affordably so you can help your students succeed. And together, we'll inspire excellence. From our classroom to yours. Times are changing. At Liberty, we've made it our priority to grow, to learn, to improve, but even with all the change, our purpose remains. We want to equip people to go make a difference through their calling in their communities around the world. And though we are blessed with an amazing campus, our most valuable resource has always been the people, our students, and those who inspire them. It's the people who serve, maintain, support. It's you. But what's really important, not the buildings, not the mountain, not the property, but the young people who use these buildings, who study in these facilities, they are important. No matter what the future holds, we will stay focused on our goal. And the people of Liberty University are how we will continue to carry out our mission. They are the ones who empower us to training train champions, champions for Christ. Christ. Champions for Christ. Training champions for Christ. Earning a doctoral degree isn't just about the prestige. It's about achieving something extraordinary and becoming the kind of leader who inspires others. 
At Liberty University, we believe greatness is measured by what you give. So while our number of online doctoral programs keeps going up, our tuition prices haven't for the last six years. Over 75 doctoral degrees, one you. Infinite possibilities. You know, football season is inching closer and closer, and we want to make sure you guys are familiar with all the new names on the roster. That's right. So in our Take One series this week, meet Dejon Anthony, a transfer cornerback who might need Rhett McGibbon to teach him some moves on the ice. My name is Dejon Anthony. I play cornerback. I'm a transfer from Shelby University. The family, and it's close to home. Being close to home, talking to Coach Hundley, talking to some other players, and they really like showed a lot of love. So I feel like it was the best opportunity, so I put Liberty. A real aggressive corner. I got good ball skills, so I catch a lot of interceptions. I'm working on being a better, stronger tackler, but right now, I catch a lot of interceptions and I'm an aggressive corner. So coming from a Division II, we don't have indoor facilities like football fields, so the indoor facility, we could go get work anytime. So I feel like that's the best part of me. And then the ice skating rink. We seen the ice skating rink, I was like, that's kind of cool. We have a whole ice skating rink. Okay, so you ice skate? No. <laughs> 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 but it's cool though, like we got a whole ice skating rink. I feel like God is the reason why like I could do anything I do today. And then my mama. So I feel like I'm playing through my dukes and my family, my grandmother, my whole family, they really pushed me and they always been by my side. So I feel like they the reason why I keep going. When it was snowing and I walked outside and I slipped on the ice. So I feel like that was kind of embarrassing in front of everybody cleaning their cars out. <laughs> You know, Matt, I'm going to put it on my calendar right now. Dejon, Anthony, and I are going to the ice rink, and I'm going to teach him how to ice skate. Well, he needs like to know. I'm slipping on the ice is an embarrassing moment. He needs to learn, I would think. I told yeah. him if he knew how to skate, that wouldn't <laughs> happen. Right. Hey, don't forget to download our Flame Central podcast and pretty good interviews on there. That's right. And LibertyFlameCentral.com. Check out all our stories there. She's Emily. I'm Matt. Thanks for tuning in this week. We'll see you right back here next time.